the rails. Let's get out of here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so tell me, um, is this what you guys would be doing if, if still, even if there was no television show? Is this like a passion of you guys to, yeah. to find? Hundred percent. Like the the fact that the cameras are there is like a bonus, but to be able to do this is pretty amazing. Like, um, so yeah, definitely. So what? I've been doing it since the seventies, mm -hmm. long before the show came out. But you got a bonus, really? I'm mm -hmm. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frankly, I wouldn't. In this regard, I would still be carrying out expeditions very similar, very much like what we do out in the field. But this was brand new to me. Like I was, I was always looking for rare, elusive primates that hadn't been studied. Some had never even been photographed. So there's a huge amount of overlap. But I wasn't specifically looking for for Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. And and I think that with your approach to it, to look at it from really a natural point of view, is it was very interesting to me just because of the fact that you're looking for things that are specific to other primates and, and things that. N not a mystical creature, but a, a living, a physical, breathing, yeah. physical needs to eat, needs to sleep, needs to, all, you know, all his needs. So my main goal is, of course, to find irrefutable physical evidence that can be presented to the scientific community and accepted as an actual species. Um, for that to be the case, yeah, it needs to be like a flesh and blood animal. I need to have DNA and actual physical evidence. And, and you know, there's, there's some people that's like, it's impossible, you guys have found something already. How, how wrong are they because of the fact that other species are being found every, you know, every, every so often? If we think we've seen it all, we're naive. There's so many things that are out there, even underwater, above water on our dry land, that we have never discovered yet. So, and that's our hope, is to find something that is, like she said, tangible, scientific, something you can actually put your hands on and see. And there's too many stories to deny there's something out there. There's got to be something to it because it's on every continent at the same time. Yeah, I think that's a big misconception is that people often feel that the world has been trodden over and everything there needs to be discovered has already been discovered. And it's a, it's a big mistake. I mean, just a few years ago, they discovered a brand new species of whale off the coast of Mexico. So we're discovering and finding new creatures all the time, not just small, but big creatures. So um, the idea that something like uh, a large, hairy, upright, walking, uh, creature that people have been reporting for centuries could in fact possibly exist out there in the woods. I discovered a new species in Madagascar with a colleague, you know, uh, about 10 years ago and gorillas themselves. I mean, these are really large animals. We only discovered the Western Lowland gorillas a little over 100 years ago, which is not Nothing. a long time, relatively speaking. Yeah, and, and then given just, just that Oregon vast landscape, how mm. easy is it, being that you guys have trekked in it, how easy is it to get lost inside of it? Or how oh. can something just disappear. Mm. Very easy. Yeah. You, you go out in the forest in Oregon and you bring somebody with you, 20 feet away, they have to take three steps to the left and they can literally be vanished from sight from all the undergrowth and the trees and everything else. So it'd be really easy to remain hidden in that kind of an environment. 100%. The Pacific Northwest will swallow you up. I mean, you know, I think even the FAA had a tribute almost 70 some airplanes just completely lost since World War II. And I'm talking never even found. So, you know, these forests, these large swaths of land have the ability to just swallow things whole. When you fly over a place like Oregon and you're just looking down out your cabin window, you know, uh, you can imagine pretty quickly that something would be able to hide and, and thrive in that environment without ever being found if it didn't want to be. And there's a lot of animals that literally make a living by hiding. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're really good at it and they can adapt to just about any environment and even very large animals up to, you know, 400 pounds can remain seemingly invisible just a few feet away from you in a, in a dense enough environment. Yeah, absolutely. Can, can you guys talk a little bit about the technology that you guys use on the show? Because um, then maybe some of your favorite pieces of technology that you've been able to, um, to use. I think the LiDAR is one of the coolest things that uh, we've used and uh, we may use it again. Um, it's just bringing those pieces of tech into this investigation kind of gives us, I think, an edge, but it also, uh, there's a lot of reports where supposedly Bigfoot can drain these batteries, they can both, you know, mess up with, uh, mess with electronic equipment. So you have that to deal with as well because you might be adding another 
uh, you know, electronic signature to yourself out there that they can pick up on. Um, but I think ladder has been one of the coolest things we've used so far. Yeah, I mean, we want to use these target zones like a battlefield and use the most cutting edge technology we can get our hands on. I mean, uh, I think it was last year we, we hired this outfit out of the East Coast who does a lot of military contracting and, and they were able to offer us some of these prototype sensitive microphones and shelled in these cases that they ended up calling dragon eggs. <laughs> and they try locate sound, so, you know, incoming and outgoing uh, shells, they can, with their software, they can pick up exactly where it's going and where it came from within a matter of seconds. So to be able to use like equipment like that and, uh, you know, and throw over a speakerphone a purported Bigfoot sound mm -hmm. and hear something back, which everybody did and go, we know where that's coming from. It's exciting, you know, I mean, I think that was one of the original conceits of the show is to get the best personnel in the field and give them the most cutting edge technology to help them you know, uh, complete their mission, which is getting proof that these creatures do in fact exist. I think my favorite piece of technology, in the military I use PVF7s, which are just night vision goggles. Oh. Everything's in those hue of green and, and white. And then thermal imaging. And for a handheld device, when you're on the move like that, thermal imaging is probably my favorite piece. Mm. Because on the move, anything in the darkness that puts out a, a heat that is not the same as the outside temperature comes off like a mm -hmm. spotlight and it's easy to spot and then you have to identify shape and see what it is you get closer to it yep. but for being on the move and handheld I, I love the thermal I mean there's something exciting when you're like when you've got that thermal and you're sort of panning the wooded horizon <laughs> and, and you're just out. waiting for something because yeah. it's happened to all <laughs> yeah. these guys these to waiting something for to peek out behind a tree or to run across the road it's um, yeah that, that equipment is, is pretty exciting and I it, and I think you need that if you're gonna, you know, seriously look for Bigfoot because I think there's a lot of movement at night, more so than the day. And something I love the drone. Oh, mm, and yeah. that's something that I'm very familiar with because we use that a lot in conservation work, just being able to have eyes from the sky looking, looking down and over. And I think that that's one of the most useful pieces of equipment that that we have out there because, as you mentioned, some of these landscapes are so vast that we wouldn't have nearly enough time to, to cover it all or to sit, sort of see through the canopy in the way that, that drones can help us. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I want to know is brought you guys' chemistry together. You guys obviously all bring different talents and, di and very different uh, perspectives to, to a very important search. Um, so was that instant? Did you guys take a little bit of time to kind of feel each other out? Or or how do we get to, to today when you know you're you're grabbing him by the head and you you guys seem like family? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you know what? It, it was like instant. I I, I was, felt very yeah. comfortable with these guys. But the more time we spend in the I'm just speaking for myself. But the more time we spend in the field, you learn to, to count on them and you trust them. You know instinctively. I know that she's going to look at something different than I do, or Ronnie does, and you count on all those different perspectives to try to get to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. But it's about trust and it's about just. The integrity of these guys is just makes it work. Yeah, I know Maria and I have been working together side by side, and it's like we start to kind of know what the other person's thinking, and sometimes hand signals and different things where we're not talking, but we know what we're looking for and what we're trying to figure out. But I would never grab him by the head no. <laughs> <laughs> without crushing it. <laughs> so, which one of you is Ronnie? That, that'd okay. be me. <laughs> Great to see you again. Yeah. Nice Great to see you. Oh, you look familiar. Yes. <laughs> no, the, it's, we really have become family, um, which is so important when you're out in the field, especially there's, there's an innate danger when you're out in the wild. Like that's something that um, you're exposed to all the elements, uh, the wildlife, which it's important that you trust uh, the people that you're with and just for really like for survival. I mean, it's really that important. And I think that we've got really fortunate in that the team that was assembled all jived and offered these unique perspectives and then on top of it like, we like each other so mm. i think that creates like a really good environment where when it gets really challenging like it motivates you to keep going right we go months and months without seeing each other but i guarantee you we're always on the phone with each other texting we yeah. communicate it, it is it's exactly like yeah. i've had to change my number three times <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird but. you can always just put the group chat on mute yeah, yeah. oh my god nice. <laughs> oh, this chat. is like my third bigfoot group chat i'm like i'm like i gotta stop i just 
hobby. <laughs> New hobbies. <laughs> now, when, when you guys are on your expeditions, how do you, how do you guys you know relax? How do you guys take it easy? Uh, how do you guys maybe get away from it all for a little bit to recharge your batteries? Ooh. Vegas. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, Family. I, yeah, we're all we all have families. I yeah. mean, you know, keeps us pretty busy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about relax. I mean, I I'm the director of a program at Florida International University. I have six kids, um, and I give lectures around the country about um, different pertinent habitat issues and, and wildlife. So, I mean, I guess to me, relaxing is Actually, just... It's not, <laughs> in, it's it's not in your vocabulary. I, I don't yeah. know. I feel like, you know, maybe on the way to an expedition, <laughs> I take a moment to relax on the plane. <laughs> Totally. I, I try to read, like to calm my mind, but I find I continue to read Bigfoot stuff, UFO <laughs> stuff. And so I'm like, I never really get away from it, but I, I try to read other things and I'm like, oh, I'm go back gotta here. go. And so I just always try to, I want to make sure like, um, as we continue to go to these expeditions, we're just constantly trying to up the game and uh, there's constant reports coming out, you know, every day. So some of those things can really provide some answers that we're, we're looking for and kind of connect those dots. Just a, just a couple more questions. Uh, when, like, you, you guys are talking about the infrared, when you guys see something like cross oh. or something, or, or when you hear, you know, a specific noise, uh, what is that like in the field? Because as a viewer, I mean, I get excited. I'm like, yeah. oh, whoa, what is that? And then, you know, the production does a really good job at teasing you sometimes and then going back to it. But for you guys, live, in person, where it can, there's, there's nothing, there's no barrier between you and whatever is out there. What is that like? the exposure level is off the charts. You have nothing protecting you from what's in front of you. You're, you're feeling the temperature of the, of the air around you, but you're also, you're seeing it, you're hearing it, you're knowing that it's out there, and it's in the darkness. So it's just, it's adrenaline. It's mm -hmm. a lot of adrenaline when you, when you have a, you know, a contact like that. And in those moments, it's like, that's why we're there. You know, it, that's when you're kind of like in the now and realize like, Oh my God, this is happening. So it's for me, it's it's always exciting. But then after the fact, I'll look back and go, oh, I probably shouldn't have done that, or I should have done this. But <laughs> or I'll tell you. Yeah, or she'll tell me. <laughs> she'll let you know. No, it's intense because one of the things that happens when you're on the field is all of those sounds, the sights, the smells, they're all heightened because you're yeah. hyper alert. Like you're you're listening out. You're, and so in the darkness, when our actual senses are actually you know, reduced, right? Because we don't see well in the dark, all of those things. It's like, yeah, there's an adrenaline surge. And it's, it's exciting because what is, what if that is what you're looking for right in front of you? I mean, that's, that's a huge feeling. It's mm. great. Thank you all so much for your Thank time. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Thanks for your time, man. Yeah, this is exactly like when I do what I do because then I get the opportunity to see some of the, my favorite people. Awesome. Cool, <laughs> man. Thanks so nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you from? Great job.